we we conduct this very professionally here on Well There's That's awesome. right. The only um, podcast. It's the only podcast. We're the best podcast. Yeah. Suck it, Red Scare. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. We have more we money. Took them. We have more and money over than them. And, well, and no, now, actually, and we now, don't have more money than them. No, no. we don't. We don't even, <laughs> no, it's not even no, more no. near as much money as they do. <laughs> no, because we have a $2 <laughs> tier. And we you have guys more don't subscriber. Give... Mm-hmm. Yeah. More that's sub- the important thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, uh, we are hotter no, than them. No, don't take money from Peter Thiel. You're going to lose subscriber. <laughs> and it was true. We didn't do that. We don't take money from anyone, even though I'm begging buysnews.com to give us their money. <laughs> we all, all I can say is we are now uh, even hungrier for power. So yes. subscribe to the thing, subscribe to the Patreon, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell every single one of your friends about the podcast. Yeah. Tell everyone you meet. Yeah, uh, we're, we're coming like for we're parents. coming for the the number one Patreon position. We're That's gonna right. do it. We're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna have the most Patreons. And, and I and want then, that YouTube plaque. Yes, that's probably coming soon. I don't think we could even avert that at this point. Uh, how many subscribers do we mm-hmm. have? When we get a when we get a hundred thousand subscribers, we'll, we'll we'll do challenge coins or something. Oh fuck, oh, that's a yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so what do you see on the screen in front of you here, though? Oh right, we got to introduce the podcast before I say this. Welcome yeah, to. Yeah. Well, there's your problem. It's a podcast about engineering disasters with slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. All right, go. I am the person who's talking now. My name is Alice Corval Kelly. My pronouns are she and her. Yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Hi, I'm Liam Anderson. My pronouns are he and him. And I no, I'm not the guy yelling at you from Twitter the last yeah, couple of weeks. No, you've been nice. You've been yeah. you've been on a sort of niceness kick, which is great for us. Yes. Yeah. Although, oh god. <laughs> give, give, give it a minute yeah. you know i just yeah i don't know man uh being at the jersey shore all of fourth of july weekend and just being surrounded by these thin line motherfuckers <laughs> just like why don't you why don't you just have the decency to <laughs> fuck off give me your house what at, what at what point do you have enough thin blue lines together that they become the thick blue line yeah, yeah. But the thing is, it's 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 cultural appropriation, right? Because the thin blue line was originally the the thin red line, and it was the thin red line against Napoleon, against the Imperial Guard. So unless you're fighting for the preservation of common law against uh, you know European uh, better organized government tyranny, then <laughs> you know what are you even doing? You're insulting my my heritage and my culture. I think the thin. I think the thin red line might even have been the Argyle and Southern Hi- Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders, which my grandfather was in. So ah. you know, I have a family connection to the thin red line. Cara Delevingne's grandfather or whatever ran the black and tan, so he could always do worse. Oh yeah, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. So she's a she's a weird lady. She what? is a weird lady. No, nope, nope. You are not. You are not getting through <laughs> this alive. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see on the screen in front of you? Is a big hole. Hmm. That's supposed to be Mood. there. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh shit, that is a big it, hole. This is a very aesthetic photograph. I feel like this should have some like cursive writing over it. Yeah, it's a story. It's a story it's a poem, maybe. I think it's a very aesthetic story overall. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but uh, th- this is big hole in the West Side elevated highway in New York City, which is the subject of today's episode. Greatest city in the world. Yes. Baby. Baby. Hey. We have oh. the greatest big hole in the highway. <laughs> Fuck the Mets. Yeah. Uh, well, this was built before the Mets. This is a pre-Mets piece of infrastructure. The I'll first. Know. It's like a Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> mm. We still had the Giants, too. Wow. wow. But first, we have to do the goddamn news. I just learned about these things today from Someone's, this. Someone Which is blew up to me. Someone blew up the Georgia Guidestones. <laughs> so these things, these things are a kind of like eugenicists, um, like Stonehenge, as I understand it, that was intended to survive a nuclear Erected war. by Ted Turner, yes. allegedly. No one knows who put them up. Ted uh, Turner, allegedly, could be, could be Ted Turner. It's Ted Turner, uh, Ross. <laughs> yeah, it's like a this set of uh, 
big granite granite uh blocks right and they like uh they have like quote unquote guidelines for humanity on there um they open strong of course with uh uh keep the human population under 500 million which is you know at this point that's a big job and there's a lot of a lot of considerations about how you would get to that figure Right. I think I thought the idea was that given that these are made out of granite and are written in like fifty different languages or whatever, that this is for if nuclear war has already happened and you're like these this is our advice is to the guys, yeah, repopulating the earth is don't don't fuck too much, otherwise you'll just do it again. Well, I mean I, I, okay. I mean I, it, maybe they could withstand a nuclear blast. Uh, Cause that's a, a a more distributed force, but it turns out if you blow up something right next to them, they're fucked. Because uh. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is that like evangelicals in particular hate these fucking things. I'm learning. Oh yeah, uh, they really fucking hate it. There's there's like there's like a whole there was like Candace a whole congressional who was running for yeah, yeah governor was, <laughs> and wanted to blow them up. <laughs> the guy was running for governor on blowing them up. Yeah, it's it's uh it, it they they have invited. It, it it's funny how much people hate them, you know? And I can like I can look past the message to just enjoying how much they troll evangelicals. <laughs> it's because it's the New World Order and it's yeah. Satanist and it's globalist and yes. all of these other things. Uh in fairness, it was built by a shadowy cabal that advocated for eugenics, but, but it's just uh, Ted Turner. It's just a weird dude, a weird, <laughs> a weird bunch dude. of dudes. Yeah. It's, it's a, a perfectly valid American tradition which has now been partially destroyed by terrorism. Yeah. This is like, a, this is like fucking the lib version of the Buddhas of Bamiyan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, shit, what were the other, what were the other nine things? If one was nine eugenics- reproduction wisely, proving fitness yeah. and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new language. Rule passion. Yeah. M dash faith, M dash tradition, M dash, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, M dash beauty, M dash love, M dash seeking harmony I'm with the glad infinite. That they whatever that fucking dash. Yeah, you know, not I just cancer am. on the earth, M dash leave room for nature, M dash leave room for nature. Hmm. Hail like, Satan, I guess. This is yeah, so Hail, Hail Satan. Pretty, this pretty is uncontroversial of, shit. Like it's, it's, it's your sort of old-fashioned progressive eugenics. It's not like it's not like yeah, Hitler this, this eugenics. That, this, that, this that Margaret Sanger <laughs> shit. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. This was stuff that back in like 1920, you were crazy if you didn't believe. Let's get real. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Were these erected in like 1980 though? Yeah, they they were erected in like 1980. Yeah. So. Okay, we did we did find out eugenics are actually bad uh, in the interim, obviously. But <laughs> that was the Cold War. People mm. people were a lot weirder. <laughs> yeah, we did we didn't yeah. know that eugenics was bad yet. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's like no, plenty of people did, but like all of the people who were considered serious or successful, absolutely were eugenicists. This so. is true. Yes. Um, well, anyway, so they, they blew up, uh, looks like two of the stones. So, uh, two out of the, what, however many languages they're printed on there, uh, lost about two fifths of them, uh, about 40%. It's, so it's in like Sumerian and an ancient Greek and shit. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. Um, they got it in everything. Hmm. So now Ted Turner's like factosum or executor or whatever is going to have to come down there and rebuild it. It's true. Uh, well, in other news, I actually I have one more thing about this. A lot of news outlets yeah, have been calling off. this the American Stonehenge, and I would say the American Stonehenge is probably Carhenge. Um, uh, which is, Carhenge is cool. Yeah, Carhenge, Carhenge is, cool. is one of them. Uh, there was one in uh, uh, Rockbridge County called Foamhenge. That's still around. Huh. It's just Stonehenge, but rendered in foam. Oh. Uh, big foam <laughs> well, blocks. Fun. Yeah. Uh, that's another American Stonehenge. This is a minor American Stonehenge. There's several bigger ones. All right. In <laughs> other news. I don't even know what the... It, like, 
At time of recording, right, yeah. Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, has sort of proven something that I was saying about our constitution. He does not intend to resign, apparently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which... And essentially, he can't be forced uh, because uh, everything in our constitution depends on custom or convention, has absolutely no sort of way of legally enacting it. And so he's just clinging on by his fingernails, and it's it's so far it's working. I wish him every success. I hope he drags the whole Conservative Party down with him. It's pretty. I funny. hope by the time you're listening, he's still Prime Minister, and he's like got a got a cabinet consisting of like one guy. That would be pretty funny. It's just him and one guy running the whole country. Some dudes. <laughs> That'd be really funny. Because no one, and like, friends. All of all of the like people who want to be prime minister within the Conservative Party someday, pretty much, have resigned in protest um, because of you know the latest scandal, but basically because of the sort of accumulation of them, um, and and so now he's just left with just whoever, pretty much. Um, he can't have like a, they can't get a vote of no confidence against him. Uh, people keep going to Downing Street today, like queuing up to tell him to go and resign, and he won't do it. Um, th this is the job he's wanted his entire life, and he is going to keep it by any means necessary. It seems. I kind of got to applaud the just the the doggedness. Yeah, of like no, drag me out if you hate it so much. It's just gonna be <laughs> like Bojo and like one other guy. I don't know. Like let let's say Jacob Rees Moggs or someone. And they're gonna be running the whole UK government. Like that scene and it's always sunny with like Charlie and Mac in the mailroom. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's what we deserve. This is yeah. the government we deserve. It's like this is two the government guys. We deserve. It's yeah, just that, two guys. That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> I mean, the the depressing thing is that fucking Keir Starmer might win a general election and become prime minister off of this shit. Uh limping over the finish line. Merely have like now that his opponent has dynamited his entire party. We applaud you, Bojo, and your uh, whatever yeah, the hell I, it is I, you're I, doing. I'm enjoying his sort of Samsonic moment of like t dragging the temple down <laughs> with him. I um, encourage Bojo's uh, corruption, but I would encourage him to go further. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> If you're, just, if you're gonna lose, you might as well be a dick about it. Yeah, yeah and it's it, it's also much like uh, Trump in a lot of ways. We've discovered the one this one weird trick that allows you to survive in a sort of uh, you know democratic or quasi institution, yeah. democratic institution, which is just not leave when you like when people tell you to. Um, just it's stick a around. Strategy, really. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it's it's very much like you know you can get away with a whole lot of crap just by doing nothing. If you, you know, don't feel shame, if you truth. don't do the thing, then yeah, you're yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's why most conservative political opinion is shame is good. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and so this whole coup has been sort of, um, you know, the dog that didn't bark, right? And that every so often some political editor will, will, will tweet, like from a senior source, uh, it's over. And then it isn't over. It just continues to roll <laughs> just on. Just continues, yes. Okay, well, I, the good I, news I, is we've made it nine and nine minutes and 34 seconds without Zencaster crashing. I just Inshallah. checked it as Inshallah. well. Inshallah. Uh, Zencrasher. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's been over for, I would say, a couple of days now. Maybe it will still be over by the time so you, you hear this. You really, so, we have a mechanism to remove the President of the United States. Hmm. Uh, obviously, we have. We have a couple. We have the 25th Amendment, and we have uh, impeachment by which a president can be removed from office. Do you truly not have like any mechanism? Ours are hard to so, use as is. But So, so uh, for sort of inside baseball thing, basically, a prime minister can be removed by two means since the passage of the Fixed Term Parliament Act. Um, you can have a vote of no confidence within their own party. Right, that I know. Uh, which they tried, it failed, and due right, to that the was rules, June, right? Yeah, and due to and the he's rules safe for that, he's got, months, right? he's safe for a year. Yeah. Uh, the second option, which is sort of the nuclear option, is uh, a, a vote of no confidence of the whole uh, House of Commons, which would mean the Tories going to Keir Starmer and asking him to initiate that. Oh, that uh, would be real funny. And then, and and then, like, I think uh, some some majority or supermajority of the House of Commons has to like tell him to fuck off, and then he may have to. Um, 
But in practice, like that seems so vanishingly unlikely to happen. The current move is uh, to try and change the rules. I've seen so that, that you can... the 1922 committee. Yes, is it so the, yes, that's the committee of backbench conservative MPs. They're going to try and change the rules so that they can vote of no confidence him again. But Boris's threat at this moment is. If you try, if you try and vote of no confidence, me even if you win doesn't matter. I'll just call a snap election uh, and also deselect all of you. So hell yeah, uh, <laughs> he, he, that, that genuinely <laughs> might destroy fun. the Conservative Party. Oh, so that is fun. I That's I really fun. hope everyone calls everyone's bluff here. It's the banter timeline. This is the funniest thing that can happen. That's pretty funny. And of course, the path is now clear for uh, Prime Minister Matt Hancock, which is what I want. Of course, obviously, you have a you have some kind of some kind of okay. yeah. He's he's gonna like do some like parkour flips over the fence outside mm -hmm. number ten. Oh hell yeah! Uh, and 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 just get in there, and he's gonna you know, just like uh, just like uh, what's his name, a uh, guy who tried to. Uh, Take over Venezuela, uh, Pete Buttigieg. Right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it is. It is clearly time for uh, Silvercorp and uh, the CIA to start funding, arming, training uh, the the sort of moderate rebels yeah. <laughs> against, against the the Johnson government. Do you do Do you mean the IRA? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it time? Listen, if any president was going to do it, it's it's Joe Biden. Oh yeah, yeah. You just have a the BBC. I'm Iris. Is Joe Biden pours nine hundred million dollars into an IRA rearmament campaign? Uh, Sh Sinn Fein wins the North. Sinn Fein wins Cornwall. Sinn Fein wins. <laughs> Listen, if Joe Biden Sinn Fein went wins on... the city of London, <laughs> <laughs> if Joe Biden went on national television and said, "All right, Boris Johnson has started dismantling the Northern Ireland peace process. I'm going to finish it. The arms and the special forces go into Belfast tomorrow. <laughs> I, I would be forced to offer critical support." <laughs> I I love the idea of like making like. The army rangers liberate Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> you are now entering free dairy, except it's except it just says you are now entering free dairy, and for some reason there's an American flag overhead. <laughs> yeah, but God, that's a cursed fucking image. America takes it over directly. They stop calling it London Dairy. They start calling it New York Dairy. <laughs> 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 that was the goddamn news. Okay. So we're about holes. We're going to talk about holes, but first we have to uh, talk about some context, which is Manhattan and moving freight and goods around in Manhattan. Right? We've talked about this problem. We have this particular about, we have, problem. We have talked about, about half this half a dozen times. This is true, but we're going to talk about it again. Okay. All right, step one what is Manhattan? Okay. Uh, Manhattan. A mistake. There's like this island, big one, right? Of... And they bought it with some Full beads. of assholes. Yeah. Uh, and it's and, and it's it's in the middle of uh, a sound, so it's got a river on either side of it. Yes, and you you got to transport a lot of shit onto this island. Yes, um, you know, so in like the early part of the 20th century, right? You know, you you have a lot of industry in Manhattan, right? And you have a lot of vertical industry, particularly yeah, you got the factory like, that manufactures triangle shirt waists. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You got the factory that manufactures like rectangular shirt waists. Yes, you got uh, the Child Labor Institute, and you got a uh, Maddie Glace, the Maddie Glacius, Maddie Glacius, of course, Child Labor <laughs> Institute. You, you, you got the you got the factory that turns the Irish white. You got yeah. you know any number of industries. Yes. Yeah, for some reason, all the buildings say, "Did you know the Irish were the first slaves?" <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. So that's no, a joke. No, it's it's that's not. a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> In order. Don't don't fucking get mad at me in the YouTube comments. I don't fucking Since care. You had, you had me for a second, though. <laughs> Since you had, um, you know, uh, you had a lot of industry on Manhattan, all the stuff for that industry came in through the port of New York, which was very inefficient, right? 
Um, yeah, you got to unload. You got to you got to fucking break bulk a whole thing of shirts for the shirt waists. Mm-hmm. Like half of them what? going missing. Give it a time. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. I'll, I'll lay my cards on the table here. I don't know what a shirt waist is. <laughs> it's it's, 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 it's a, just it's a, just a shirt. Shirt. Is it yeah. just a shirt? Yeah, it's what? just a shirt. This is bullshit. This yeah. is fucking nominatively. I I hate this. It is just a shirt, right? I thought it was like I thought it was like a separate extra panel that you it's had like, like added to your shirt. It's like shirt a woman's to... blouse. Well, yeah, it's just I, like I, a... I was I was thinking it was like you have your shirt and then you have your like shirt waist, and I mm. I wasn't quite sure what the shirt waist was, other than that like it was a piece that you added to the shirt. Oh, uh, just a blouse. Like you had it. Like you That's had a... like a a regular shirt, and you had kind of like a beaver tail in the back, and that was oh, the shirt. I thought waist. you were talking about like a maybe a camisole or something. I don't no, know. No, what it's like, was it's, it's until like, like a girl. Or... <laughs> <laughs> so I, yeah. So I was an only child, and uh... <laughs> right. So, um, you know, yeah, ships they come in with imported goods. I don't know, maybe some Egyptian cotton or something, right? And then you know, you you would want to have your. Triangle shirt waist factory as close to the piers as possible, so you have reduced transportation costs, right? Mm. Um, you know, and 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 so you had a lot of like industry that was like uh, not only like clustered there, was stacked on top of each other, right? Uh, so you know, if you look at, for instance, this the uh, quote unquote fireproof ash building, right? A S C H. Um, you know, this yeah, is the this home. Is why we don't of, go to NYU. Yeah, <laughs> this is the home of this was the home of several textile manufacturers, one of which was Triangle Shirtwaist, right? Um, and this form of industry was promoted by the fact that moving stuff down the street was pretty difficult. Um, you know, if you but if you if you were only a couple blocks from the docks, right? Uh, you know. You just put the stuff, you put the cotton on the cart, you drove it over, you brought it into the building, and then you send it up an elevator, and then people work on it and turn it into shirtwaist until, of course, they all die horribly in a fire, right? Yeah. Because we invented freight elevators way before, like, the safety elevator for people. Yes. Uh, so you could just, you could move shirtwaists and triangles and whatever up and down mm. relatively easily. Yes. Um, but if you had once you had the send stuff the other way, it became an ordeal because you had to ship things to New Jersey. Mm. Ugh. Yeah, B- before the time when Trenton made and the world took. Yes, uh, <laughs> here it was sort of Trenton taking. So shipping stuff to New Jersey was pretty difficult because you know you had to ship things to New Jersey Explode in it. order to go further west on the railroads, right? Explode um, it. And this, well, you did float it. No, no, but, not even like on a ship or a barge or anything. You just put it in the river, hope it floats, and just yeah, sort of I kick it Oregon down. Trail. Well, no, <laughs> what you did is you loaded it onto railroad cars, and then you floated the railroad cars across the river. J- just like loose? Yes. I think a railroad no, car is pretty heavy. On a barge. Oh, okay. Um, so I, 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 let's look at like one of the most modern buildings that was built for this purpose. The, uh, uh, this is the Starrett uh, Lehigh building. It's one of my favorite buildings in New York. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, uh, yeah. It's still there. It's, uh, it's really cool. Um, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like the first like 50s and 60s lines of Lego system buildings. Oh, yeah. Uh, so in order to move... Again, your method of moving stuff from New York City to New Jersey involved loading it onto rail cars in Manhattan and then floating those rail cars across the river, right? Uh, so this was a big warehouse built by the Lehigh Valley Railroad and the Starrett uh, Corporation, which later went on to build, among other things, the Empire State Building and Trump Tower. Um, sort of a land of contrast. Land so. of contrast, yeah. Um, in order to move all this huge quantity of freight uh you know you'd have you have this building it has some garage entrances where trucks can go in the trucks drive down a ramp into an elevator the elevator brings the trucks up the warehouse to various loading docks where they're then unloaded then later 
once the freight has been sorted, it goes into a freight elevator that brings it down to the first level, right, which is where the railroad tracks are. This would be a right? really fun and really <laughs> finicky management game. Oh, yeah. Or um, a really good CSGO map. <laughs> that, that stuff is then loaded onto freight cars in the bottom level of the Le Star at Lehigh building, right? And then they take a little switcher engine and they shove it across 11th Avenue, right, onto a barge. The barge brings it across the Hudson River to New Jersey. Okay. And, and this, is, this is all happening in Manhattan. I thought this was like after you'd barged it into New Jersey. No, this is the process of getting the stuff onto the barge. Jesus. <laughs> all, 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 of your, all of your triangle shirt waists and stuff need mm -hmm. to be trucked in, sorted, then put on the, the right. train, and then put on the barge, and then yeah. shipped to New Jersey, and then re-sorted. And this is, this was the largest and most modern facility for doing this. I think this building was built in 1936. Um, but it's designed to fix a very stupid problem, which is that the Port of New York was inherently inefficient because of where it was, right? And this, could, this is a problem which really could only be overcome with uh, this horrifying thought of collective action and planning, right? Because uh, <laughs> yeah, you'd have to like do some sort of government here. Yeah, you'd have to do some government, right? Um, again, this is the most modern freight house on the West Side waterfront. Most of them are older and more congested. You can see in front of the building here, this is the, this is the Baltimore, Ohio warehouse. Behind this was the Erie uh, warehouse, which was just an open lot. Um, you, <laughs> know, you know, some of, these, some of these buildings were from just after the Civil War. Uh, this, you know, some of them were just open rail yards confined in one block. Every railroad needed its own freight house and its own piers and its own railroad crossings, right? Yeah, because sure. we're still like duplicating and triplicating everything because of railroads. Really? Exactly, because they're all competing with each other. They're all, they're all fiefdoms. They're all little fiefdoms. I, right. I I find that like thinking about the railroad in terms of a capitalist uh, system does not make as much sense as when you think of it in terms of just being straight up feudalism. Uh, mm. <laughs> And I think yeah, you have to advance through the railroads in order to get to uh, sort of like socialism in one country, which is Conrail. Yes. <laughs> and all this freight is, of course, brake bulk. So every time you handle the freight, some of it some walks of it away. Some goes missing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it all just goes into a camel coat at some point. So every railroad has this problem except the New York Central, right? Um, they built their West Side line in 1849. Uh, imported goods or manufactured goods in Manhattan could simply move directly from ship to warehouse to train with no car float. Hmm. Didn't have That's to put small. it. Why doesn't everyone do that? Oh, well, uh, from there you could ship it as far as Chicago just on the train, right? However, the line was built in 1849 and had some very 1849 qualities <laughs> to it. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> On the other it, hand, some very cool shots of trains just in the middle of the street. This is yeah. true, yes. This guy oh. on a horse is going to have a bad day. <laughs> oh, no, he's, he is... That he's is, the cowboy. That's a 10th Avenue cowboy, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're uh, right. Yeah, he's, uh, he's there to uh, prevent people from getting run over by the train as much as they otherwise would, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the... It ran straight down the middle of 10th Avenue all the way to uh, 72nd Street from St. John's Park Depot way down here, right? Um, sure. The trains proceeded very slowly. They had uh, the guys on horseback warning people get out of the way to the train, but they still managed to mow down like hundreds of people and horses each year, though. Yeah, so to grease the tracks. Exactly. With, uh, yeah, didn't you listen to the atmosphere in the early episode? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But this was this was the cost of doing business, right? The New York Central Railroad could, at the expense of mere human lives, and horses. provide much more competitive service than their rivals. And horses. We got the horses, man. Yeah, and, and horses. Uh, but the net result of this is that the Port of New York had to contend with, you know, 10th and 11th Avenue being constant rolling disaster areas, right? Um, yeah, because you're trying to run a, a freight railroads yeah, directly just along, through, along yeah. the yeah. whole length of it. Through some guys, yeah. Just through some guys, yeah, and you have like, yeah, like horses and carts, 
This is an image of, uh, I believe, 11th Avenue. You can see we have early automobiles. We got horses and carts. We got big, stupid trucks. Um, and then this is like a 14-track railroad crossing here. Oh, that's um, terrific. And then there's Man, a train that just, just goes... Just you don't even need a marshalling yard. Just yeah. drive the truck alongside, have them open the boxcar doors and <laughs> throw your shit out. in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, further down, we see a train that just goes directly down the street. Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> Who cares? Mm -hmm. There's not any rules. So I'm driving across like I have right of way here. Yeah, you're the train. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the first you're check the on whether you have right yeah. of way is are you the are you the train? So the the congestion in the port of New York really came to a head in World War One, right when terminal capacity in New York City was strained to its absolute limits yeah. to the point oh, where- shit, we gotta get a bunch of howitzer shells and guys yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and shit and, to and, Europe. Yeah. Exactly. And, 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 you know, again, the way that worked is every single shell got shipped to New Jersey, it got car floated over, uh, the boxcar went in a warehouse, they unloaded it, and then they hauled it back across the street onto the boat. <laughs> But it, it already Christ. had to go onto a boat to get... Yeah, more but boats. You, the big boats can't more dock Richard, in New Jersey. More Richard boats. Now. The big boats dock in Manhattan. The small boats ah, dock okay. in New Jersey. My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs> could you not, could you not d dredge New Jersey a bit? No, shut up. Okay. I... Yes, you could, <laughs> but... Sunk cost fallacy is a thing. I see. Okay. <laughs> and in this case, also probably like sunk barge fallacy. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, Uncle Sam had to step in, nationalize the railroad under the United States Railroad Administration. Uh, again, everything, everything went, you know, <gasps> everything came to New Jersey, car floated across the Hudson River, goes across 11th Avenue, unloaded into the warehouse, sorted carted back across 11th Avenue, loaded in the ship, then it goes to Europe, right? This is, this is like any sort <laughs> oh, of like factorio or satisfactory type game where I've pl been playing it and I've made a solution that just about works. It makes my head hurt to think about, and it would make my head hurt more to try, try and play disentangle it. Play yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's just there forever, yeah. and I'm always chasing like marginal efficiency this on this thing. I do weapon loadouts of Warzone. <laughs> So, uh, after the war, people were really sick of this, and the solution had to be found, and one solution was the creation of a new entity called the Port of New York Authority, right? Oh, no, <laughs> no, I don't yeah. want to go on the piss-covered bus. You, you're like, <laughs> don't you're like, send I me didn't, on the piss bus. I, I didn't get my entire dick and balls shot off in Bellow Wood to get run down by a, by a freight train oh, on 11th Avenue. You. you got it to be run down by a bus, Alice. Yeah, exactly. And therefore, I, I support the creation of a government body that's gonna yeah. like maintain Make everything worse. A series of places that will just smell like piss all the time in I, order to make the city worse. For my thirtieth birthday, I made apple pie moonshine. Hmm. I told a buddy of mine who had who I had woken up at like three in the morning, driven to New York, and drove him down to Philly because he had no money. Yeah, and, uh, and I told him, "Hey, if you're gonna have a glass of this, you need to split it with a buddy." And he didn't fucking listen to me. And he woke up, I don't know, Roz, if you remember this, sweaty and hungover, the, the most hungover he'd ever been in his entire life. I drop him <laughs> off at the bus station, takes the bus without functioning air conditioning to Port Authority in New York. He gets off the bus. He immediately throws up in a trash can. <laughs> and then he stumbles back to his uh, RV down by the river and texts me, a paragraph, roughly, of death threats the next day. <laughs> <laughs> can we pause for a second? I gotta pee. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Or you guys can just keep talking, and I'll come back. Yeah, and think about the uh, spirit- one of the spiritual homes of this podcast, the Port Authority Bus Terminal. I've been in there exactly one time, and it was like, it was, it was, you know, it didn't seem that bad to me. Um, it, it was I've, like, I've okay. seen pictures and yeah. every, every photo I've seen of the Port Authority bus terminal, it looks like, uh, it, it's going to probably be great when the year 1978 hits it. But until then, uh, it's, it's just kind of stuck in limbo. There's actually some great, uh, 
photos of like the, the the original Port Authority bus terminal, which is still sort of encased in the modern structure. And it's this mm. cool like uh, late Art Deco, early mid century modern thing. I can't have that. Yeah, that sounds and, nice. Nah, nah, yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta to encase that sort of, in some gigantic yeah. like X skirter doohickeys. Yeah, we've, we've built the Chernobyl sarcophagus, but in order to protect you not from radiation but from seeing Art Deco horror of horrors. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I mean, the zone is like a, it's a complex place uh, full of anomalies. You can uh, see curves. The, it, it's just like not a great way to like move the amount of people they need to move through that terminal. What they should probably do is trains. Mm, but that's impossible. I'm 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 hearing twenty four story, uh, fifteen hundred thousand square acre Mario Cuomo Memorial bus station. <laughs> of the ramp complex out outside that thing is crazy too. You know, considering like the uh, what is it? That's a, that's the Lincoln right, I'm tunnel, back and right? recording again. Okay, so we have this concept. This this new concept comes up of the public authority, right? So right. the idea previously of the you would just have a corporation, which is you give it to a bunch of guys in top hats, yeah, for a defined the purpose, and is, they do the thing. It's a government body, but it's largely independent of like electoral uh, ism. It's it's it it has it, you appoint some guys, and then they they go and do their own thing for a long time, right? Uh, it's pure technocracy. It's very technocratic. It it's, works it's, it's so born good, of, is what it does. There's this, there's <laughs> this thing in the like the early 20th century called the good government movement, which uh, it rarely governs, and when it does, it's not very good. Um, you know, but the idea is okay if we just get the right people in the office and give them the authority they need, we can we we can improve Sounds society, overcome right? anything. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I am angry and heartbroken, and that's why today I'm asking you for fifty dollars because uh, <laughs> I was too busy not wiping my own ass competently to uh, do anything about overturning Roe v. Wade. <laughs> and if there are any decency in the world, I would <laughs> Capitol building. It would be funny if the Port Authority or any sort of public authority acted like the Democrats did and just used anything that went wrong as an excuse to fundraise from the public it instead of anyone else. Really, it would be really funny if you get, a if the you get an email from the Port like, Authority. Want this to suck less? Like, give us ten dollars or we'll kill this puppy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, get, you get an email from from the Port give Authority. Give us ten dollars like, and we'll kill this puppy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Liam, can I count on your support? Yeah, because uh, you gave someone your your fucking your your email address six years ago, and now a Port Authority intern is like I, messaging you. I I would actually be much happier if the Port Authority resorted to directly f like crowdfunding, mm -hmm. or just like uh, if you join the VIP uh, Port Authority bus tier, you actually get your own personal bottle of Febreze. Uh, so when you get off the bus, <laughs> you can you can try and re retain some of your dignity. As opposed to throwing up in a Port Authority bus terminal trash can. You get Shout your own like, VIP trash can. So, <laughs> this is my can, rose. it has yeah. my name on it. So, <laughs> so, the Port of New York Authority, um, Panic. had, yes. you know, it could, uh, it could, um, you know, it's independent of, like, electoral influence. It has a large bonding capacity, it can raise a whole lot of money based on oh, future revenues. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. And it can exercise eminent domain. Right? Oh no! <laughs> so, in oh, order to, boy. to a limited extent, though, um, oh, okay. at least initially. So they, their first action was to hire. One of their first actions was to hire consulting engineer William J. Wilgus. Good name. Yeah. Is he self-taught. I I am not sure. I didn't look this up. Oh, what's um, the point if he's not? I'm going to link the paper I learned all this from in the uh, description, because a lot of this was pretty wild. So, William J. Wilgus was a civil engineer for the New York Central Railroad. He designed Grand Central Terminal's double-decker track and platform layout. Uh, he he designed, designed it to capitalize on air rights around the station. Um, He's a big fan of people hitting their head on low beams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go to if you go to Grand Central Terminal now, the actual station takes up like two blocks on each side of the headhouse. Um, everything else is built on top of the tracks around it. Wow. 
Oh, he was what paid off to I'm do on, this by like the head injury caucus. I'm on doctors. slide eight, and what in the goddamn hell am I looking at? Mm-hmm. That's where <laughs> what, we are. What? What? That's what, what I'm uh, about who, to explain. Oh boy! So uh, he invented uh, modern third rail electrical systems along with Frank J. You Sprague. know that diagram of Bin Laden's cave? Yeah. <laughs> it approaches guarded by audio, tribal for militiamen. Our, for our audio only listeners, the Mujahideen is hanging around here. Yeah. <laughs> approaches guarded by Port Authority militiamen. Throwing up in trash cans, of course. So he he had high aspirations for his railroad career and seemed to be on a natural track for the presidency of the New York Central so Railroad. Speak. Right. Hmm. Um, now, when I it, wish he hadn't invented the third rail because the third rail system fucking terrifies me. It, it's not just very, it's not a very good way to distribute electrical power. I mean, uh, AC is clearly superior to DC. Number one, uh, number two, I don't like I don't like a sort of a, a live rail staring me in the face. Yeah, I, I don't appreciate the, uh, that at all. You ever see the Chicago L that has the grade crossings with the third rail? Fuck no. <laughs> yeah. no, fuck that. <laughs> fuck no. Absolutely not. They have like uh they have like special like uh the the fences go down into like these sort of you ever seen those fences that prevent cattle from going down a road? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, they do that in Chicago on the grade crossings for pedestrians. I do <laughs> no. I, I the thing is, right, anytime I see a third rail system, it's like the railroad is oh it like it's standing in a shadowy alleyway. It's opened its coat and it's like, hey, kid, you want to die? <laughs> yeah. You want to fucking uh, uh, perish? Alternatively, horribly? would you like some alert? <laughs> yeah. So, so, this Wilgus, being Chicago. So, Wilgus, um, you know, he looked like he was going to become, he, he was on, he was heading for the highest levels in New York Central. But then a train crashed in the Park Avenue tunnel in 1907. That's a tunnel that leads to Grand Central uh, Terminal, right? Uh, the railroad immediately tried to pin the blame on him, going so far as to destroy all of his documents proving his in, in, innocence, right? <laughs> Jesus, they fully, like, dreyfus him. Yeah. Um, and he, he, was, he, he reconstructed the documents for the court and proved his innocence. But they kicked him <laughs> out of the railroad. Piecing together shredded fucking documents, <laughs> yeah. the rules. <laughs> they kicked him out of the railroad. Um, mm. So he started a career as a consulting engineer, right? I hope he was getting paid double. <sighs> I call Probably. this one the re I call this one the reverse Ollie North. Now, before <laughs> before Wilgus came to the Port Authority, he had a, a proposal for a privately funded solution to the port problem. Right? Mm. His first proposal was: What if we had small underground trains? that would link the various warehouses of the waterfront to a central distribution terminal in New Jersey. Right? Now, see, the so, thing is, that objectively fucking rules. Mm -hmm. Basically prehistoric path? Is that the idea? Yes. Um, you can see but that- only for freight? Only for freight, yes. I mean, you can see that the rules. line here. You would have all of lower Manhattan served by these little tunnels. You would have had one central tunnel that goes over to Jersey. No, no, no. That we would... should still do this. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of instead of shirt waste or whatever, it's whatever they make in Manhattan now. So like tax evasion schemes yeah. and software or whatever. Just ship all of that, put it on crates, <laughs> ship it underground. Yeah, and these these little trains would run in eleven foot diameter tunnels underneath the sidewalks, or in this case, underneath the middle of the street that you see in the uh the photo here or not the photo, the engraving, the whatever you call it, they'd carry removable 10-foot-long containers. And this, this is not so absurd as it might seem, like so impractical, because... No, uh, the this sounds like a freight subway. The Chicago... It, it sounds like it rules. The Chicago Tunnel Company had been operating su successfully on this model for two years at this point, right? Okay. Um, they had, like, even tinier tunnels, right? They oh, were, yeah. like, miniature trains. Yeah, they were... I think they were about the same size, but they weren't like multiple tracks like this diagram shows. Chicago Tunnel Company was all like a one-track railroad, um, but because they had so much tunnels, it didn't matter. Um, now, Wilgus estimated he'd significantly reduce the cost for all railroads to ship cross-harbor while also breaking the New York Central's monopoly. 
Um, and he pitched this. And all it requires you to do for is for like all it requires is four or five railroad barons to work together on one thing ever. Right. Yeah. Some way. Right. Impossible. Some yeah. Yeah. Impossible to so listen. Listen. All you have to do to fuck over the central is just do one thing together. A <laughs> rump. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So they pitched he pitched it to the executives of all the other railroads, uh, you know, the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western, the Erie, the Pennsylvania, the uh Lehigh Valley, the uh, the various other ones, right? Uh but the Central had a trick up their sleeve, right? Which is that back in nineteen oh six the New York State legislature had ordered them to elevate their tracks on Tenth Avenue at the railroad's sole expense, right? Uh, at this oh, point, okay, the, yeah, because they were because they were sick of like horses and people getting mulched by those giant freight sure, trains. Yes. Um, now, this forty million dollar plan was under review. Oof. Uh, Wilkes's plan, by contrast, would cost one hundred and twenty million dollars. Right. Damn. Uh, and that cost would be borne by all railroads serving the port. How many railroads are we talking about total? And I, I mean, I know there's a shit ton of what would have been class ones, but I assume there's also some so, dinky railroads hits, you know, sitting in there. We're looking at the Central Railroad in New Jersey, the Erie, the DLNW, the Long Island Railroad, which at this point oh, yeah, was okay. independent, Lehigh Valley Railroad, the New York Central, New York Susquehanna and Western, Pennsylvania Railroad. And this map shows the West Shore Railroad, but that was part of the uh, and New you York said Central. 120, so 15 million a railroad, roughly. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they would have had to, you know, pay $15 million to get the system running, right? Um, hmm. And so they shot each other instead. Y yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because, <laughs> Why cooperate you know, when you could be a little bitch instead? Mm -hmm. The yeah, Central yeah, was yeah. willing to eat the cost to elevating the uh, line on 10th Avenue uh, to preserve their dominant position while the railroads in New Jersey saw the plan as an uh, expensive measure to prevent the New York Central from eating $40 million, right? right. So why, why, why am I going to pay $15 million to prevent the New York Central from paying $40 million? So there's no railroad support and nothing happened and congestion got worse. I mean, I love markets. Business genius. Business yes. geniuses. Yeah, yeah. 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 Deals. Short -termism. Deals. Deals. They, we would put a man, they would put a man on Mars in my lifetime. <laughs> they put a man. Some people. We can put a man on New Jersey within our some, lifetime. <laughs> some people, some people Just make symphonies. For me, deals are my art form. All my losses were lessons, I said, as I careened a train down 10th Avenue. <laughs> So Wilgus, Wilgus gets appointed by the Port Authority. Now he has theoretically more authority, right? There's and no way to get railroads to an to act of revenge. Yeah. <laughs> he beheads all Vanderbilts. <laughs> <laughs> like the Romanovs. For honorable service against yeah. all Vanderbilts. Yes. Uh, he murdered, uh, uh, what's his name? The various Cornelii. Yeah, I was thinking the reporter guy. Anderson Cooper, bud. Anderson Cooper, that's who I'm thinking of. Mm. Oh, because he's gay? I f you, well, that too. No, because he's, he's a Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. <laughs> yeah. He is a Vanderbilt. His mother was what? Gloria Vanderbilt? Mm. That sounds right to me. So in, in 1916, now that Wilgus is a major consulting engineer for the Port Authority, right, he starts promoting what he calls an automatic electric freight distribution system by means of an underground belt line, right? Oh, I like this. I yeah. like that. The, yeah, it's the Hyperloop, except this one is useful. Yeah. It works. <laughs> so uh, a belt line is a type of railroad that exists in a lot of uh, United States cities, and it's used, used to exist in many more, but essentially in cities with many large congested and proprietary railroad terminals, uh, they would build a belt line around the periphery of the city. It would have its own terminals and yards be easier to move traffic between railroads and industrial customers, so on and so forth, right? Some of them were mm. independent. They had their own engines and rolling stock. Some were jointly owned by several railroads. Uh, it, mostly they were just regular railroads with short hauls and a lot of traffic. Um, so there was like a Chicago belt line. There's an Atlanta belt line that's currently being turned into a trail to do gentrification. Um, <laughs> there was a... Philadelphia had a belt line. 
uh, which ran on the streets for a lot of its length. It was not very good. Um, but Wilgus's automatic electric belt railroad was another beast entirely, right? You would have eight car trains with an electric locomotive that would be dispatched automatically from large classification yards in New Jersey, right? Um, it's a, when you say automatically, what are we talking about here? I mean, it's automatic. Yeah, yeah but like How? from from a punch card, from like I am not entirely certain how it would have worked. I think they just. You know, I think they probably would have sent Vibes. the train manually, oh, but or would have been something like the Hershey Park uh, Chocolate World experience, where they're just sort <laughs> of all on a loop. Well, they were. They were going to run on a loop from New Jersey into Manhattan, right, and make several right. stops, right? And then okay, they so would it's just come, Chocolate come World. Back Got around. it. Yeah. Okay, so it's just Chocolate um, World. Got it. You know. So it, it looked like I'm not sure if they were able to handle normal freight cars or if it was like everything had to go into the special freight cars. But uh, they wanted to do like intermodal swap body type cars, right? So you have a, you have like a, you have like a, a container that can be lifted onto a truck. That, that goes, is what I'm calling my gender affirming yeah. clinic is swap body, <laughs> swap body. Yeah. But this was uh, this was a man out of time, right? Like he's he's predicted containerization mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and a lot of like sort of. Uh, precision fucking freight precision movements. scheduled railroading. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, precision scheduled no. railroading doesn't involve precision. No, that's true. <laughs> but uh, I I'm, think I meant you... small p precision. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> they would have built several large terminals in Manhattan, right? Um, where the train, the the automatic electric train, arrives in the basement. And then they lift the container up with an elevator or the freight car, right? This is like, this is like so <laughs> forward thinking. It's wild. Yeah, and that and and so you know, you'd either unload the uh, the freight if it were a regular railroad car, or you would um, uh, move the swap body container onto a truck. It would drive out of the warehouse. Right. There so you know how I make yeah. jokes about like going back in time with a Glock. I've done this a couple of times. What, what you <laughs> used your time machine for was to go back uh, to see this guy's office, but you just forgot a copy of the box that you were reading, and you just left it on his desk. <laughs> I'm reading it right now. Highly recommend it. It's really good. So hmm. you know, and there there'd be several of these terminals in Manhattan. This would solve the port problem permanently, right? Um, and it sure. would eliminate the need for all these car floats. It would eliminate, it would open up the Hudson River for more steamers, right? And there would be no freight trains on the streets of Manhattan once and for all, right? And it, this seems pretty crazy, but you got to consider the time period, both the uh, Brooklyn Manhattan Transit and independent subway systems of that era could take most steam railroad uh, freight cars at that point if they needed to. And they were building like a hundred miles a tunnel, like every two years or whatever, uh, right? So this yeah, is they had guys like being shot out of the water opposed to the Brooklyn Bridge or whatever. Yes, uh, this is just sort of the natural evolution. And like just eight years after this was proposed, London Mail Rail opened, right? And that I was love a, Mail Rail. That was a fully automated system. Um, what is really funny to me is that he was doing this under the auspices of the Port Authority when it would destroy the port of well, New York. It would have been good for the port because the port would still be able to operate from its current location while having most of the marshalling yards out in New Jersey, right? I see. Disregard right. that. I'm very stupid. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I'm tired is what I am. Yeah, you're so sleepy. It's okay. The mm. Port of New York Authority put this on its long-term plan, right? They're like, this is a great idea. But simpler options existed for the short term, mainly establishing a conventional Beltline Railroad and consolidating the car float operations to a centralized terminal, right? Mm. And this required railroad approval. And most of the railroads agreed with it on principle, right? And other railroads played hardball. Because you got to get like fifteen of these motherfuckers yeah, you get to these, agree. All your ducks yeah, in a row, yeah right. exactly, right. But, but what do they? What do they want in return? What do they want in return? What they want in return for a very efficient Kill system? The Vanderbilts, 
<laughs> what they want in return for a very efficient system that would improve their profits and improve their long-term viability. Uh, what they want in return for that horrible price is the Port Authority has to take over all the commuter trains. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about railroads is how much they hate running passengers. <laughs> All railroads since the beginning of time have hated passengers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell taking a railroad. <laughs> yes. It's like being in the Caribbean, being on one of those resorts. They hate you and they want you to know they hate you. <laughs> I, believe that, I believe it was the DLNW that was most insistent on this one. You have to take our commuter trains. <laughs> and this was probably outside the scope of the Port Authority's power. They just barely, they did manage to cobble together with the several railroads, almost a full belt line that could run to a centralized car float terminal. Uh, but the DLNW controlled one mile of that line and they're like, no. No, uh oh, God. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> Take out commuters. <laughs> I'm going to make Norfolk Southern look like yeah. a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in the meantime, of course, the traffic on a waterfront was still terrible. And uh, hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these. So let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. A guy named Julius Miller was a uh, Manhattan borough president, right? That's, that's this guy here, right? Mm. Uh, so Manhattan- I know who that other guy is. Yeah, we know who that other guy is, yeah. So now, although these are very different guys, but they do wind up working together here because Julius Miller is, you know, he's a Tammany Hall guy, right? Mm. Um. I thought part of the reason why the Port Authority existed and why it had the authority that it did was to keep it out of the city of New York and the boroughs shut of up, New Alex. York's political corruption. <laughs> yes. Yeah, counterpoint, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the railroads assisted in this. Um, you know, Miller was, of course, uh, Julius Miller was, of course, acutely aware of the traffic swinging, problems. Swinging light over your head, dark interrogation room, some guy asking you over and over what you think of Pullman cars. <laughs> <laughs> he was acutely aware of the traffic problems plaguing Manhattan, right? You know, trains whacking into people, being unable to move on 11th Avenue, right? So on and so forth. By 20, 1925, he was very unhappy with the lack of progress being made. Um, yeah, because well, Tammany Hall, the thing about Tammany Hall is that, like, uh, compared to some of our more modern corrupt political organizations, they always got stuff done. They didn't like it when things were bad because it lost the money. <laughs> Whereas now it's actually good to lose money because yeah. it means you're another pussy or whatever. So he was very mad at, at, at the Port of New York authorities' lack of progress on the comprehensive plan and with the New York Central's failure to implement their ev elevated line, right? So Miller decided, all right, we're going to force this issue. Uh, and the Port Authority was like, we're not going to get any help with the railroads. Uh, we're just going to have to do a trucks plan, right? Oh, no. <laughs> so, so they devised the West Side Elevated Highway. Right? And this was and going that, to be one of the first 
elevated highways ever built. An hour and five minutes in is our episode. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it's the topic for today. <laughs> it's important. It's context. Well, there had been at this point not so many uh, elevated highways built, or I think this was the first one. There had been highways built, like limited access highways. They were not common, and but they were pioneered by our other guy here, Robert Moses. Robert Moses. Yes. Bobby Moe. Friend of the show. Friend of the show, Robert Moses, right? Um, <laughs> Returning champion. Big Bobby Moe. But yep. Most highways at this point have been built in the form of quote unquote parkways, right? And the idea of a parkway is. You drive is, on the parkway, you park yeah. on the driveway. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, you. you <laughs> oh, you told like that joke when you're not telling it. <laughs> it's a parkway because it's got like grass by the side of it, right? Yes. And, 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 no, and no black people in buses to ruin your trip to the beach. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, it's always, uh, that's one of the things about the power broker, which is, um, I think, needs a little bit more context, which is. Most of the buses back then were double decker, and double decker buses did not oh, work sure. on those parkways. Uh, but yeah. there yes. shouldn't have been any bridges. But, but at the same day, at the same time, Robert Moses basically got up in the morning and rolled a D twenty to see what ethnic group he was going to fucking drive out of an area of New York. Not that a hero day. of our people, I will he say. Was not, that. A, not a, um, not not a. Uh, I mean, definitely not a Tammany Hall guy. I, Robert Moses' problem he was he was terminally he was his own corrupt fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was terminally middle class. Mm. Um, you know, his 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 view of how like the highway system should work is like, you know, this is a nice leisurely scenic drive we all do. And in the face of insurmountable evidence that's not how it worked, he was like, nah, I just keep going ahead with it, you know. Um but Moses is not important immediately here. Um So Julius Miller sort of forced this project along, right? Uh, the Port Authority, as I said, they had no help with the railroads. They're like, all right, we'll do this. Uh, the New York Tunnel Authority also assisted, um, although they didn't write notes about this, um, because you had, uh, what's his name, Ole Singstad trying to build the uh, Holland Tunnel at this point, and that would hook up yeah, with Robert it, right? Moses' warrior. Oh, uh, no. Robert Moses hated Ole Singstad. Uh, yeah, that's what a Wario uh, is, I assume. Oh, a Wario, excuse me. Yeah, right. I also heard Warrior. Yeah, I heard Warrior as it's well. That, it's, yeah. it, it's that roticism that I have, mm -hmm. or non roticism, whichever it is. Um, and Moses would come eventually to hate the Port Authority because Moses was in charge of all the authorities except the Port Authority. But at this point, at this point, uh, he's, he's early in his career. He's built a couple parkways in Long Island. Uh, and he's about to uh, build Riverside Park and Riverside Drive. Um, but anyway, Robert Moses origins. Yes, sick, sick of these fucking origin stories. You know, I already know who Robert Moses is. Just play the hits. But this is <laughs> this is a uh, a Tammany Hall project, and it looks like it. Um, mm. So uh, it's built before the Interstate Highway Act. Well before the Interstate Highway Act. No one knows what an elevated highway is supposed to look like at this point, right? Uh, you know, it, what do you have to look at as an example? You have the Merritt Parkway that's being built simultaneously to this, or the Northern State Parkway in Long Island, right? No one knows what a highway should be. Uh, I and love that foundation where they've clearly gone like, okay, it's an elevated train. We'll just do that. Yes. Uh, that that is basically how it was built. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Aren't there different loads and stuff on a highway as opposed to a train track? Yes. Okay. So, but it's also it's also a Tammany Hall project, so they have to figure out how to employ every kind of tradesman, right? Every, everyone <laughs> yeah. out there, so including like stonemasons and people like that, right? I see that. Um, so. You know, you you have uh, really cool details. Really good, really good, like Art Deco details. Yeah, I mean the whole thing. That's, is like, that's another Tammany Hall thing. Is that like okay, you get the job because you're someone's cousin, and you get the job on the understanding that you're gonna overcharge, and then some of that goes to a guy, and then some of that goes to another guy, and you're gonna vote for this third guy. But you it, inexplicably really still do a good job on the actual thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's not a feature of a lot of political corruption in general, I would say. So one one of the big features on this uh, roadway were center <laughs> exits, right? Mm. The, the ramps on the highway were in the middle, right? That meant the inner lane was the slow lane, the outer lane was the fast lane. It seems disastrous. Um, but it meant it was a little bit cheaper to build the ramps, which were, you know, just straight up like, you know, it's just a two lane road in the middle, right? Oh, I mean, I, I hate doing the fucking curved on and off ramps in, in city skylines too, so I get it. Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. Uh, most of the slow lane is a horrible weave zone, of course, because these exits were so frequent. Uh, but it was a low speed limit. It was only a 35 mile an hour road, I want to say, right? Um, there were a whole bunch of S curves in it because it stayed entirely within the right of way of 11th Avenue, right? I'll, I'll, I'll show a pic of one of those, a picture of one of those S curves later. They're pretty <laughs> crazy, yeah. Um, another feature of this highway when it was built was Belgian blocks. It what was, is a what? It is not paved with asphalt. It was paved with Belgian blocks. What is a Belgian block? Belgian block is what Americans call cobblestone. <laughs> ah. Okay. Uh, but your, your actual cobblestone is very rough stone. Belgian block is the much smoother, like, stone surface, right? I was gonna yeah. say, you, you, you're driving around in your fucking, like, open top um, uh, Ford or whatever, Jalopy. you're making tw 25 <laughs> miles an hour and you're vibrating all of your teeth out of your jaw. Yes. So this highway was paved, yeah, it was paved almost, it was paved entirely with Belgian block. It was not fully upgraded, ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, so this they, was never a paved road. It was never a paved road, no. <laughs> it's elevated, unpaved road. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we put a dirt track on a fucking bridge. <laughs> Eat me. Sorry, someone was at the door and I had to chase them down and I'm back I think real. it, it, it could have been funnier. I, I mean, maybe maybe they could have done a wooden surface. That would have been funnier. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> no, I mean, I could I could see doing like a metalled road, even. Well, those those are still fairly common on like drop ridges and stuff. I yeah, would, yeah, that's true. Mm. Fuck you, motorcyclists, fall at your own peril. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it, it's it's all Belgian block. Um. Oh, and uh, it, Joey from. Um, uh, yeah, so, States, somebody is had a, to steal it. Yeah, someone had a Belgian block connection. Absolutely, to get some like cheap Belgian blocks, and so someone stole an entire guy block he's from Belgium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is yeah. that a country right now? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the catering for the work crews on this is very heavy on the waffles. <laughs> <laughs> the little known Belgian mob. <laughs> The Belgian Mafia. <laughs> I've seen it, Rouge. That's a good movie. <laughs> Fit them for some concrete clogs. Yeah, they're all... <laughs> <laughs> they're all hanging out in a smoke-filled room drinking completely undrinkable beers. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like wild ale made with bird shit? That's all we have, but we have nine varieties of it. So... Unlike the subways, the L's, the skyscrapers, the ballparks, and really everything else in New York in this era, construction on this road was agonizingly slow, and it proceeded in fits and starts, right? It's weird. Like, New York at this point is going up like that song Powerhouse, right? Like, yeah. stuff is happening, and meanwhile, you just have one guy... One Belgian mobbed up guy painstakingly carving these stone blocks. <laughs> so the southern section yeah, went up. racist face, yes. I mean, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were starting the depression off, right? But the southern mm. section went up first from Canal to 22nd Street. Then they built a disconnected northern section from 72nd to 59th in 1932. Then they extended the southern section north to 38th. Um, and then I, hold on, let me figure this out. This is like very confusing <laughs> because of the numbered streets. Yes, exactly. That's they a got grid a, system, got the 46th, 1934. The 12, we have a grid system in Glasgow, but the streets have names. Oh, the 12th I don't know. Street we do that gap fairly. from 46th to 59th uh, wasn't uh, filled until 1937. 
And then they extended it a little bit farther south in 1939, right? And then, of course, Robert Moses finished the job. Um, The southern section took a long time. The northern section that Robert Moses got funded with Parks funding happened real quick. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because he wasn't beholden to like Belgian organized crime interests. No, exactly. It's a bunch what of when you're not you're not did, in debt to Baron yeah. von von Racist face. Didn't put a bunch of fucking curlicues in there. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it it is truly a Robert Moses joint. It looks like all of his other shit. Yeah, and, yeah. And it, it, the concept here was pretty simple. You know, you bury the railroad tracks, you renovate Riverside Park, which at this point was just a sort of a a horrible swamp. Right. And then once you renovate the park, you run a highway through it. Right. Um, yeah, good. New Yorkers don't of, deserve anything nice. Yeah. <laughs> Uncritical support for Robert Moses because people from New York don't deserve nice things. <laughs> there's, uh, there's some, the, that is the position I'm taking here. There was some creative financing required. It's documented extensively in the power broker, including one of the things he did to get the highway built was uh, saying it was a park access road. Right. <laughs> Fascinating. Which, <laughs> and the park that it accessed was the swamp? Yes, which he fixed up. Okay. Yeah. You too can throw up in a trash can the with big, views of the river. Big chunk of, uh, a big chunk of the money came from... Okay, so you see, this is the 72nd Street Yards of the New York Central Railroad. You can see the highway running over it. Um, and this extended farther north. There was a bunch of railroad tracks running through Riverside Park, which was legally a park and practically not because it was full of New York Central Railroad. Um, what he did oh, sort of a part of this project was to bury the railroad. Um, mm. Although the yards stayed around for a long time. This was eventually bought by Donald Trump. Um, and that's uh, the, the Riverside development is there now. Um, but because he called it a park access road, he got a bunch of free works progress administration labor, right? I I, I love the WPA. Like w- socialism we'll can only anything, be accessed, anywhere. yeah, <laughs> by, only by for the worst people. Yeah, <laughs> by means of scams. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, this project uh, was twice as large financially, or twice as expensive as the Hoover Dam. Um, Jesus. Added 83 acres of parks, a new crossing at the Sputin Duval, uh, destruction of a couple hundred acres of Inwood Park, uh, which was Manhattan's only virgin forest. Oh, so no great um, moss then. Yeah. <laughs> um, added conspicuously no new parkland in Harlem. Um, hmm. Yeah, but, what it was. Yeah, but for the rest of the island, lots of new parkland. And the net result of this, once this was finished and funneling traffic down into uh, the uh, the West Side Elevated Highway, was instant and horrible traffic. Um, there were a lot of time savings oh, that were supposed to happen. Did we induce some demand? <laughs> wow. How did that oh. happen? Right, because this funneled into the, uh, once it crossed the Spoot and Duval, that goes up into, I want to say the Sawmill Parkway, uh, or maybe it's not that one, it might be the other one. The one that goes more towards, hold on. It was built at the same time. I'm going to look this up on the map real quick here. Hmm. No, it's the Henry Hudson Parkway, excuse me, not the sawmill. Um, but it, uh, you know, it instantly overloaded the brand new West Side Elevated Highway, right? And... Mm-hmm. You know, so this was clearly a disaster because all of the expected time savings failed to materialize. Like, you know, it it it, it helped no one and it hindered a lot of people. It did help more cars get into Manhattan, but once they got there, what are you going to do? Hey, uh, no, uh, but on the other hand, it was very expensive. It was very expensive, yes. and it, But uh, the press liked it. Um, and it inspired several other projects, um, you know, like, let's say, for instance, here we have the, uh, the Pulaski Skyway in New Jersey. You can see the, the center exits Fuck, here. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh my God. I always loved, I, I love this thing, actually. It's one of my favorite uh, structures. 
Every so, time I'm on the goddamn Pulaski Skyway, I, I just curse you by yourself, Roz. I've never been on the Pulaski Skyway. I, we have been on the Pulaski Skyway together. No, we haven't. I'm pretty sure we have. When were we you, on the you Pulaski Skyway? You wiped it from your memory. I, maybe not. I feel like we have been. Was that not when, we, when you got mad at us for going all the way around New York, or was that a different time? No, we, that was when we were on the Head, Henry Hudson Parkway. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. And I almost killed you twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My yeah, bad. That's fine. That's such a... Mm, I almost killed you on the Pulaski Skyway. I, I, I don't think you should drive on these things anymore. Yeah. Well, well, this I, is a, a fun one about this. You can see this, this ramp here that goes up into here. I believe mm. this is the Kearney ramp. And this was designed mm -hmm. to serve the industry in that area. And yeah. once they built it, uh, by the time they finished it, trucks were too heavy to make yeah. it up the ramp. Oh. <laughs> well, you can only have the industry there if you have a, like a cute little caravan or whatever. Yeah, yeah that, that'd, that'd be nice. Uh, another one, of course, is the Boston Central Artery. Um, <laughs> Dad. Was, yeah, they, uh, they built that very shortly after seeing how great the uh, West Side Elevated Highway was. Um, and they... Uh, you know, they spent eh, just just uh, just over a decade trying to put it underground. Um, <coughs> that's another episode, though. But the big problem with the we West... We will get to the big dig. Shut the hell up. <laughs> yeah. The big problem with the West Side Elevated Highway, of course, is uh, how vehicles changed while it was being built. Right? Yeah, you went from your open-top Ford that was shaking all of your teeth out of your gums... Yeah. To, you know, at first a slightly larger thing, and then a larger thing than that, and then a much larger thing. Yeah, so here's a, here's a Ford Model AA as a common truck when this highway was built. Uh, shortly after it started. Rickety as shit. Yeah. Looks cool. Looks really cool. <laughs> shortly after it was being built, here's the Ford Model BB, right? Uh, a slightly larger that's Should have um, kept going with that naming scheme. CC, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah, like an Excel yeah. spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You too get a copy of the protocols of the elders of Zion at every glove box. <laughs> so, so uh, once they finish the thing, this is this is a 1940 Mac LH, <laughs> just oh, a yeah. little bit bigger. <laughs> a little bit. See, it's it's carrying pie. That's Civic Intermountain Express. Yes, yeah, it's it's, oh, it's got three pie. times the axles. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, I, it's, I miss when we all wore hats. I, I mean, you could you could hat. bring it back. You could start no, wearing a hat. No, 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 no. When heterosexual men wear hats, I want to beat them unconscious with a nine iron. <laughs> <laughs> but when it was brand new, it could not handle this truck. Good, <laughs> but then, but then the the highway would stayed around. You know, by the 1960s, we had things like this Mac F series here. You know, the cab oh, over. So fucking right. good. <laughs> well, I like a, yeah. Bring back a cab over truck. I think the thing is right. Cab over and uh, like cab behind engine trucks should. There's this stark divide where you only have cab overs in Europe and the opposite in the US. I think we should switch. Like it's half time. I think <laughs> we should give up our cab overs and go back to the like big long Scania's, and you should get cab overs back, and it'd be cool. Yeah, the American cab overs. They all look really good. Um, yeah, it's a great aesthetic. I think the drivers hate them, though. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, if you, you, you can't have everything, and sometimes <laughs> horrible working conditions are the price you have to pay for design. This is true. Uh, I mean, you know, and then you, you try and look at the engine, and then you accidentally uh, spill your coffee all over the windshield. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. I, but I, I like it, because, you know, that way, if you park it facing Mecca, then the truck is Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. like Neil Armstrong. <laughs> That's right. Try and check the engine, and your dog falls. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I found. No, shut up. <laughs> so, you know, these sort of tractor trailers, they weren't very common for a long time, but they were ubiquitous by the time the highway was finished, and the highway couldn't handle them. It was built too lightly. This thing was basically obsolete when it was new, right? Yeah, and that was the only thing it was meant for, but instead it's just for car trail. Whoa, okay. <laughs> I see what you meant about the S-curves. This mm -hmm. is the cool S in, in highway form. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, and everyone sort of knew. Do they not have enough polygons? Did they accidentally set it to like straight lines instead of curves? What? Well, at that time, manufacturing like a curved beam was not uh, so easy. So yeah, basically, yes. They didn't have that many polygons. <laughs> you don't have enough polygons. <laughs> Build more pylons. Um, so everyone knew that this highway was obsolete basically by the end of World War II, right? But there was a lot of money available uh, for new highways to the suburbs, fixing an, inter- an inner city highway. That's lame. You don't want to... We're getting into a sort of like urban decline sort yeah. of thing here. Right. Yeah, no one wants to fix the old obsolete highway. They want to build a new fancy highway, right? Uh, so Robert Moses, his plan, which is never implemented, is they would build a brand new highway by infilling all the space around oh the obsolete tiers. <laughs> this and they'd this build boy the just loves a end. highway. Yeah, yeah, he loves a highway, yeah. Um, they would build a highway at the end of the piers, right? Um, and oh. this hey. came to nothing. Right? Nothing happened there. What they did... Perhaps for the best. What they did was half-hearted attempts at modernization, right? Which mostly involved paving over the Belgian blocks. <laughs> we finally got a paved road mm-hmm. in the, what, 50s? 60s? 70s. 70s. <laughs> oh, fuck, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the highway was like, yeah, it was, it was, and they never finished Wait, it either. So, so when you're like, oh, we just ignored this for a while, I thought you meant for like five years, not 30. This is America, this Alice. Is America, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even while they were building like the other huge New York City highways, they were just like, yeah, we'll get to this later. We'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. <laughs> but the, hi- the highway was fun- functionally obsolete, right? It was built to standards well below that of normal interstate highways which had been established at this point and they well interstate highways like no one knew what a highway was when they were making this thing yeah, they were so, just going on vibes but now we had standardized those but, vibes but based by highway now, construction. Like the, the parkway that went through riverside park was funneling loads of traffic onto it right <laughs> mm. you know they just sort of tried to widen it to six lanes but in the corners it was still two lanes which is a terrible idea Right, it was a congestion nightmare, right? Uh, and it was a maintenance nightmare as well with the old-fashioned steel structure, right? Um, mm. You can see this is this is a picture from I want to say like the early seventies. This one is I think from nineteen seventy-three. You can see one of the uh, I think this is Cunard lines. Uh, oh, cool! Their uh, the terminal was not looking very good. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can. Th- th- this is the sort of era of New York history where you can get some truly apocalyptic shots. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Holy shit! But they, they still, they were like, okay, we should probably at least pave this thing. We probably have the money to at least pave it. So they did that in the seventies, right? Um, so on December fifteenth, nineteen seventy three. Oh no! A dump truck, which is one of the few trucks allowed on the highway. You know, I climbed up a ramp, headed on up to the job site where they were paving the highway, right? And this was a full-size tractor trailer with 30 tons of asphalt. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> and it was tr- they, they, they should have had some kind of, like, heritage thing where you can only use a Ford AA <laughs> to <laughs> fucking on the job site in this. You have to use the shitty little, like, comical horn and everything. Traveling northbound, it reached an area between Gansevoort Street... And the Dutch Little West 12th Street. It's called Little West 12th Street because uh, it's blocked off from the regular West 12th Street by a change in the grid. I thought it was like the sort of historical district of the West 12th Street immigrants. Oh, no, it was a piece of shit garbage area at the time. <laughs> yeah, it's New York, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Phils. So I got to that area. And it fell down. Oh, mood. I hate when I fall over because my dump truck is too big. (laughs) (laughs) Fell down through the highway onto the road below. It took an eight. It took eighty feet of roadway with it, as well as a sedan. Right. Um, You need context if you're a horrible, disgusting, dirty New Yorker listening to this podcast. That's right near the Whitney Museum of American Art 
at the end of the high line right now. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. I am so fucking tired of the high line. <laughs> well, this oh, was the oh, companion you, project to the high line. Oh, oh, you, you, you made a park that nobody can go to because it's too fucking busy? That's too fucking hot? Oh, great. You did it. Oh, your private island reaching out. Oh, it's so great. Oh, I look at the park that only white people can go to. Oh, my God. It's so <laughs> amazing. And the Knicks are going to turn it around this year. <laughs> nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. It's too crowded. <laughs> <laughs> so, no one was injured. Um... And That's a dad. It's not looking too good, though. I will yeah. say that. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, you can see the cobblestones here. This is uh, this is a picture from like the mid seventies. I want to say, um, no one was injured. The construction company that owned the truck was found at fault. The construction truck company that owned the truck was then awarded a contract to clean up the site. No <laughs> bid. Nice. Um. But this was New York City in the 1970s. They were bankrupt. What were they going to do with the freeway? Leave it. The answer, yeah, they, they, they closed it and just left it there. I love when people do that shit, man. I love when just <laughs> leave shit there. They couldn't repair I love, it. It's just so fucking <laughs> arrogant. Like, <laughs> yeah. They couldn't repair it. They couldn't demolish it. So it just sat there for like a decade. How many holes yeah. Ozymandias? Yes. <laughs> And it was closed to cars. Look on my work, see money, and try not to breathe in the air too much. <laughs> it, was, it was closed to cars, but not to pedestrians. Anyone could get up there, and a lot of people did. It was sort of the high line before the high line, which... Well, I mean, New York in the 70s, if you had closed it to pedestrians, it would not be closed to pedestrians. Right. Like, this is true. Functionally, anyone could still get up there. Well, the other thing is, when, when they built it, there was a sidewalk on it. Um, I didn't know pedestrians wouldn't want to go on an elevated highway sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, they didn't know they would be cowards. Mm -hmm. This is true, this is true. Um, <laughs> the other thing, of course, is the High Line at this point still had trains running on it. Um, I think the last customer on that shut down in the, like, 1980. Yeah, you could still use it as a park, but you had to be really fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, if anyone's not making the connection, the High Line was the sister project to this that um, the New York Central elevated their tracks on 10th Avenue. Um, so all of a sudden, of course, there was horrible chaos as, uh, you know, there was uh, a huge amount of traffic increase on 11th Avenue, which actually there wasn't. Like, uh, people didn't, once the highway was not there, people just didn't drive there anymore. Right. Yeah, yeah, sort of the opposite of induced demand. Re reduced, reduced demand. Reduced demand, yes. <laughs> Crazy how that works. Yeah. Give me one second, I'll be right back. Don't so pause it. What, what, what we're saying is the gas should be $20 a gallon. I mean, I just saw something that basically, like, in the uh, last quarter, uh, truck sales, at least for Ford, went up, like, 25%, and SUV sales rose 30 Like, it doesn't matter what gas costs. Like, Americans will bitch about it, they're still gonna pay it. Mm. And like yeah. I, I, I will say like that that's sort of a two part problem where you know for a lot of the country the infrastructure for like electric cars sucks and electric cars also aren't the answer but you know I think all these manufacturers switched away from like making meaningfully small cars I oh yeah even, I don't even know I how many there are today on the market I'm well that's that's the thing like um y you may be aware that this uh, sort of british action the uh, the tire extinguishers yes yes have spread to the united states yeah of of deflating the tires of like large suvs you know low mileage cars uh, luxury vehicles and it's like i'm not sure that you can get a non electric high mileage car in the us easily right um i mean it kind of depends on what you mean by high mileage like you know i'm i'm looking right now uh, Nissan will sell you a Versa, which is, you know, their, their entry level car mm. for 15,380 starting MSRP. And it can get up to 3240 MPG. And then it just, it sucks because like the, I think Toyota has the right idea in that, at least for their minivan, the Sienna, uh, mm. it's mandatory hybrid. They sure. Yeah. Edge, but like, that's expensive to develop, and car manufacturers don't want to do it. And yeah. I, you know... That's Plus it's, like, sort of culturally ingrained now, like, right. a big car is, like, popular. Right, and, like, that's the thing, is people, you know, will make all sorts of excuses for them. 
I I don't know how the Ford F one fifty Lightning is selling. Uh, well, but, Joe Biden drove it that one time, yeah. so that's you know that's given it the cool factor. And Ford will sell you a Maverick with a hybrid. The hybrid is standard in the Maverick. That's a great idea. I just like if you quote need a pickup, you can get away with. At you least get the, the, you get the dumbass Rivian with the like motors and the wheels. Uh, yeah, but it makes eight hundred forty-five horsepower. Because <laughs> the motors and the wheels are the most logical place to put them. That's yeah. how it works on trains. Yeah, except therefore, for, for therefore for an off-road truck. Well, it's not off-road, Alice. It's a pavement yeah. princess. Yeah, that's what anyone who drives differently are. is fucking lying. Yeah, that's like I don't know a Land Cruiser, which they won't sell us anymore. Hmm. Where are we? This has been car talk. Bring, Sorry, uh, bring automotive back the conversation. ST is what I'm saying. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So this highway's uh, it's busted, right? Yeah, it's an eyesore. Did it's you a, say it's busted? Yeah, bussin. It's, it's bussin. It's, it's, it's a sign. No, of, it's not it's, busted it's because not there's no buses. Because buses on. can't use it. Yeah, it's a sign of like urban decline and urban decay and blight uh, yeah. and a city government that's like given up. So everyone, the, the the first reaction here is, all right, how do we replace it, right? Mm. So Train. no, absolutely oh, not. <laughs> there was this very ambitious replacement idea, sort of along the lines of uh, Robert Moses's idea to, because uh, Robert Moses by this time doesn't have very much influence, but uh, along the lines of Moses's vision to run a highway along the end of the piers. It was called Westway, right? And it'd be a fully underground freeway that we built on landfill 1,200 feet out from the existing edge of Manhattan. Right? Wow, huh. genius. And this was back when it was relatively easy to get Federal Highway Administration money, right? So the, uh, the uh, Federal Highway Administration designated the corridor between the Lincoln Tunnel and the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, tunnel as I-478 Assuring 90% federal funding, right? Good for that. Yeah. Planning began before 1973, but there was a new sense of urgency after the collapse, right? Um, Mm. So this ran through no less than three presidential administrations, all of whom were very enthusiastic about it, right? Nixon wanted to go forward. Ford wanted to go forward. And of course, Reagan wanted the project to go forward. There were some other people who thought it was a bad idea, but they didn't count, right? And this doesn't exist now, right? So it didn't get built? Yes. Um, Okay. The Army Corps of Engineers approved the permit for landfill, right? Because you need to go through the Army Corps of Engineers if you're going to alter a coastline. Um, The EPA did not contest it because they thought Reagan would veto their veto, right? Wait, why would they have vetoed it? Um, Is this why we have a fish? A horrible fish on the screen? This is why we have a horrible fish on the screen, yes. Would it make the fish sad? It would make the fish sad. Good. Uh, Build it. That that, that, that fish has been living off the piers of Manhattan for as long as it's been evolved. I don't think you can kill it with a highway. Oh, I can sure fucking try. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the project was funded. With federal funny money, so it was almost assuredly going forward. In fact, President Reagan traveled to New York in September 1981, which point the derelict highway was partially demolished. Um, He traveled to New York in September 1981 to announce, The Westway Project begins today. Fire the nukes. Tear up this wall. (laughs) Tear up this wall. So Judge (laughs) Thomas P. Grisey right? He had some different ideas. He was, he was a Nixon appointee, but he was also a Manhattan resident, right? Because this is back when people could afford ah. to live there, right? <laughs> so he, he, in January 1982, he called the Army Corps of Engineers bluff, noting that by the standards set down by the EPA, their environmental impact statement was complete bullshit, and Westway would have a significant impact on the Manhattan striped bass habitat. Amazing. Does, does anyone, like, ha, okay. Is, is Manhattan particularly famous for striped bass? Are these striped bass any different from... Simply do not worry about it. Don't worry okay. about it. 
I mean, you can't eat them. They're probably too full of mercury and other horrible things. Mm. Yeah. You can look at them. So, I guess. You can look at them. And, I mean, looking at one here, who wouldn't want to do that? The environmental impact statement had to be conducted a second time, taking a full two years. But Governor Mario Cuomo oh boy. <laughs> somehow managed to convince the Army Corps of Engineers that they could do it in one year, which they did. Right? And it means a year of looking at this fish. Yes. Uh, it was particularly important to look at it during two winters, I believe, was the thing. Mm. Um, in the meantime, there was a bunch of opposition to Westway that sort of grew. It was like, you know, sort of your grassroots stuff in the area, right? But uh, all the politicians, they wanted, you know, you couldn't turn down this amount of federal funny money, right? Sure, sure. Once you got this amount of free money, you got to do something with it. And we're talking uh, as diverse character as, as um, of course, uh, Governor Maria Cuomo, uh, Mayor Ed Koch, Koch. Koch. Is it Koch? Koch. It's Koch. Mayor Ed Koch. Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan. They're all in favor of this project. They want to get this uh, thing going, right? Why? <laughs> and uh judge grisa real fucking war yeah nightmare blunt rotation next up <laughs> uh judge grisa gets the uh expedited environmental impact statement from the army corps engineers and he said this is bullshit you need to take two years to do the study and extends his injunction indefinitely <laughs> <laughs> And the appeals, the appeals go nowhere, right? September of 1985, the Manhattan section of I-478 was stricken from the interstate highway system. West, Westway was dead, thanks to striped bass. Judicial <laughs> and, activism. And, and one judicial activist. One judicial yeah. activist, yeah. One cantankerous federal judge. <laughs> The best hey, kind I want of this highway judge. here. Sometimes. <laughs> Fuck you. Just, take the subway like fucking, everybody else. He likes, he likes to go down to the end of the pier and feed the bass, <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. And the funding was diverted to tearing down the old freeway um, to mass transit, which is good. Although I don't know exactly what it went to. Uh, and construction began in 1996 on a replacement boulevard, right? I'm doing air quotes there on Boulevard. Uh, later christened- Isn't a boulevard meant to have a sidewalk? Oh my god, it's so bad. It's like really, really <laughs> bad. Every time I've been up here, I've been like, this is- This, this is- how, 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 how do you people live like this? This is um, like Floridian in terms of its infrastructure. This is true. So uh, the replacement Boulevard later christened the Joe DiMaggio Highway by Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Oh, fuck the Yankees. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's still a horrible car sewer. It's impossible to cross on foot. Like, you can do it, but it's very difficult. New Yorkers are still denied a pleasant waterfront to this well, day. I think that would, that, would, that would always be a stretch, but they're Good. denied a waterfront. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, and this has become the model for freeway teardowns across the country. Huh. Such as, uh, you know, because we're scared of reducing car capacity. So here's, here's the Alaskan Way in Seattle. Uh, we've got the Embarcadero, San Francisco. And the romantically named John F. Fitzgerald Surface Road in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> there, there she is. That's one of the, na the like, stop names when Lisa Simpson stays on the bus too long. <laughs> There she is. Ruiner of my life. Hmm. Well, what did we learn? Uh, uh, we're terrified of ever doing anything. Like, su sunk cost fallacy, both for trains, for barges, but most of all for cars and trucks. Demolish yes. all of New York. Mm -hmm. Well, build, I mean, listen, the, cli the climate's going to do it. The climate's going to do it for That's you. True. That's true. New York will be returned it, to the sea. Listen, you, you can't say New York is denied a pleasant waterfront without being aware of the fact that it's going to get one, whether it wants it or not. This is true. This is true. You've got to get a bunch of waterfront property on the, like, fifth floor. I'm, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good here up at uh, elevation plus 80 feet. Uh... <laughs> 
And I guess, uh, you, you know, Tammany Hall, not great in the long run, although surprisingly idiosyncratic for its political corruption. I like the good things Tammany Hall did, but not the bad things. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, the, that's the basic critical problem. Critical support. <laughs> critical support for Boss Tweed. Yes. And his struggle against, uh, against the- Normal corruption. Yeah, against normal corruption. Uh, well, we have a segment on this podcast called... Is this going to be the right drop button? Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Ah, oh, nailed it. I had a 50-50 chance here. Good job. I don't know what's on this other button. Hello, Justin, Alice, and Liam, and guest. Question okay. mark, yeah, exclamation point, it. question don't mark, close parentheses. No, got it wrong. <laughs> fuck you. I hope you all are well. And the subject of today's pod wasn't too depressing or existentially soul crushing. Hey, no one died. We're doing amazing. Yeah, no one died, but, except yeah, that's probably, probably, from, uh, probably from probably uh, from lead poisoning uh, mm, from the exhaust from all the. No, the no lead. one died except for oh, all of the like kids. Look big, it. big demographic things from having too many cars. Yeah, I. No I, one died. Proximately, I bet someone was killed building the original highway. Oh yeah, I don't without, think they kept those but statistics. They were migrant, we don't so count. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. yeah, they were they were Italian. It doesn't matter. Or Jewish, <laughs> or Chinese, or Irish, or Irish. We haven't forgotten Duffy's cut, you motherfuckers. I don't think they would have <laughs> had too many Chinese uh, migrants. Oh, I guess yeah, that yeah. Means- yeah. No, Tammany Hall didn't like those guys. Uh, uh, they they were very specific. Again, some of, <laughs> what, some of the bad things that Tammany Hall did. The Irish did. were the first slave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway. I hope you all are well, and the subject of today's pod wasn't too depressing or existentially soul-crushing. I want to share a story of blatant management disregard for worker safety. This comes from a brief stint where I worked as a production supervisor in a small cannery. Ah. Let me explain first a little about the process at this cannery. You take the stuff, you put it in a can, you seal the can. Yes. We made canned pet food, we made canned pet food pate out of meats, grains, and vegetables. How would you do a pet feud? Pet feud? <laughs> Yeah. These were loaded into weigh bins and onto scales by a crew of four to five workers. We called this ingredient loading area the meat deck. <laughs> I would not enjoy working on the meat deck. I like meat. Meat's delicious. Um, mm. Sorry to all the vegetarians listening. listening. Uh, yeah, anyway. I have to work on the meat deck. Yeah, I'm, I'm up on the meat, meat deck. Meat deck. Meat <laughs> deck. We called this ingredient loading area the meat deck as the crew spent most of their time loading 50-pound blocks of frozen meat onto a belt that fed a crusher and grinder. Some materials came in 2,000-pound totes that we could load in using a hoist, but many ingredients only came in 50-pound bags, which we had to be loaded by hand. Right? Yeah, like, you know, uh, reconstituted circus animals or whatever the fuck. Yeah, exactly. It's a... Horse meat with traces of jockey meat. (laughs) (laughs) As you could probably imagine, this was difficult and sometimes unsafe work. The meat deck crew worked 12 hour shifts, usually four days a week. How bad do you want a meat deck crew t shirt? (laughs) I want the meat deck t shirt. Yeah, that'd be good. (laughs) We were frequently short staffed, go figure. So some of the meat deck crew. (laughs) <laughs> You're really gonna say it like that every time, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, just get on board, I guess. Some of the meat deck crew would pick up extra overtime days and end up working five or sometimes six 12-hour shifts in a week. On top of this, because it was such a crappy area to work, turnover was very high, and most of the workers in the area were temps who had been there less than a month and only received a couple hours of safety training before starting work. The meat deck was where. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. 
was where most of our minor injuries occurred, as people would frequently <laughs> drop frozen meat blocks on their feet or hands. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I hate this podcast so I'm, fucking I'm, much, dude. I'm picturing a perfect Minecraft block. Cube, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just one one <laughs> cubic meter <laughs> of meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you a, dr you a drop cube, this cubic meter of meat. Oh. Shit. <laughs> 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 I just thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get it together. Get it together. Tell us about the meat deck. We also had a lot of strain and exertion injuries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From, from, the fucking <laughs> from the meat deck. From the, from the, from the, from the block of meat. <laughs> I put nine steaks in the crafting crafting song. I got a block of meat. Meat craft. It just it, it has the texture of just like raw steak just on each side. It's oh god. The incident I wanted to talk about concerns one of the scale bins shown in the attached pictures. Oh, this this thing top left. Okay. Yes. That day we were making a recipe that called for dried sweet potato powder. Hey, you don't want that. That's not from the meat deck. That's from the veg deck. Uh, that's yeah, not yeah. for the veg deck. That's just from the powder deck. This came in oh, the powder deck. This came in fifty pound bags, not in the larger totes. Usually these were easy enough to load, but for some reason the lot we were using that day was hard and clumped. <laughs> Mood. Mm. Typically, to load the bags into the bin, they would cut through the side of the bag and pour it through a grate into the scale bin. The clumped powder wouldn't pass through the grate, so the meat deck crew. <laughs> 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 Okay, we really do need a meat deck crew t-shirt. <laughs> the meat's the most I've heard you laugh in a minute. <laughs> the meat deck crew started banging the open bags against the grating to break up the clumps and pass them through. Yeah, you gotta declump this shit. Uh, unsurprisingly, after a few hours, one of the grating bars broke off and fell into the bin. Oh. Uh. At the time, I was in a different area of the plant, but my boss, the plant operation manager, happened to be doing a walk through the meat deck when the bar <laughs> broke. Well, I mean, this is fine. It's, it's like um, dog food, but it's like, oops, all metal. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's extra iron content. It's good for your blood. It's good I roughage. Think. Yeah. After the meat deck workers pulled the cover off the bin. They could see that the bar was sitting near the bottom of the nearly empty bin. The operations manager told the guy who had knocked the bar into the bin to put, up, put on a pair of coveralls and shoe covers so oh, as no, to no, not no, no, contaminate no, no, no. the ingredients and go climb in, in after bin? it. <laughs> yeah, go in the bin. Go in after it? Yeah. Well, they'll do that. You can't, like, hook it out or something? Well... I don't know. I think he just wants to punish the guy. <laughs> yeah. Now, these bins are about nine feet tall with completely smooth inside walls and are emptied by a 14-inch diameter auger at the bottom. Yeah, once you get in, just auger yourself yeah. out. In order to stand in the bin, the guy who my boss tried to send in would have to have to stand in the powder with the, in the bin with his feet touching the auger. Nope. How my boss was planning on getting him out once he grabbed the bar, I have no idea. I mean, keep in mind, it's a dog food factory. You, know, you, you can do something. You don't worry about it. it. Yeah. 
uh, read Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for more meat deck facts. <laughs> Thankfully, the QA tech on shift saw what was going on and stopped the meat deck guy as he was about to climb in the bin. Wait, he was gonna do it? He was gonna do it. He didn't? Okay. Rather than realizing the inherent danger in his plan, the operations manager started yelling at her, saying things like, I don't have time to wait around, the line is down, and I don't care how, we have to get that bar out of that bin. Oh, classic management. Yes. By that point, I had heard of the, on the radio what was going on, and I showed up with one of the plant mechanics. The mechanic and I locked out the screw at the bottom of the bin. Wait, they hadn't done that before the, they tried Jesus to send, send him into it? Of course not. Why would you do that? Mm. And then the mechanic used a broom to fish out the bar about five minutes later, something no one else had apparently thought to try first. No, we got a mangler guy. We got to put a guy through an auger first. We got to put a guy through an auger, yeah. It's okay, it's okay. He's, uh, he, he was wearing a clean suit, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, the company actually took some action after this all happened. They fired the operations manager who tried to make the guy climb down into the bin. I moved Good. to a different department in the company where the safety culture was better. And I was able to stop being a supervisor. And a cannery where this all happened shut down not too long afterwards, but for un completely unrelated reasons. Yeah, it was an accident on the veg deck. Yes. Mm -hmm. Solidarity. Let's all get a guy on that shit. Solidarity from an ex supervisor, Tyler. Oh, thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Tyler, yes, uh, for informing for, for us. Very nearly killing Justin. Yeah. <laughs> informing us of the meat deck. <laughs> 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 this has been safety third. safety third. Oh no! <laughs> Our next episodes. It's the Boston molasses disaster. The Boston molasses disaster. Yes. I don't have any commercials. Nope. No. I don't, no, I don't want anyone, either. You know, you know, I, you know what all of our shit is. Yeah, you know all our crap, yeah. Sub subscribe, subscribe to the fucking YouTube yeah. thing, because I yes, want the plaque. I want the plaque. Come, come, I want plaque. Coming soon, plaque. the official, well, there's your problem, Minecraft uh, meat deck server. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, coming soon. That and the, the meat deck crew mm. shirt, which is just going to be like, stencil font meat deck crew, yeah. <laughs> white on black. I'm on the meat deck. <laughs> <laughs> well, bye everyone. Well, bye everybody. Everybody.